Yeah, just draw. Yeah, draw. Use that for mana. Draw from your clue. You got it. You got it, opponent. You got it. Be the smart. There you go. They did the smart. They can draw one. They did, in fact, draw one. Hello, my fair citizen. Strider back with another fantastic brew. This is the very first Crimson Bow land destruction brew. This is actually the very first brew. However, it is also land destruction one. And this one is fucking spicy. And we call this deck Pink Muffin, right? Because why not? So our land destruction of choice is going to be Fall of the Thran. But our finisher is going to be one of two things. We have Maniform Hellkite, which is a new card. And we have Faithbound Judge, which is also another new card. So starting off with Fall of the Thran, we do have a six mana enchantment. Comes into the battlefield, destroys all lands. This is amazing. I'm a huge fan. I like land destruction. So does everyone else, obviously. Um, and then the next two turns, each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. So ideally, we would like to exile their graveyard. However, in this particular deck, we just didn't have any room to put it. So if you're going to take this deck and build it at home, you could add maybe four Bajuga Bogs. Uh, since they are lands, they are tap lands. Keep that in mind. Um, but they are lands, so you can still tap them for colorless, essentially. Um, and, and that will actually get a little bit more impact from the fall of the Thran if you're still struggling after that. Uh, it also kind of depends on how much graveyard synergy there is with the meta once it kind of establishes a little bit. It's just something to keep in mind. So coming into the new cards, the win conditions, we have Maniform Hellkite, which I think honestly might get banned. Honestly, I think this card is a little bit too good. Uh, it's a four mana, four, four flying. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX dragon illusion creature token with flying and haste, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast this spell. So again, if you're running like Omniscience or Golos, or if you're doing Mizzix Mastery and you're casting stuff for zero or for free, you're not going to get any creatures. Well, you will get a creature, but it'll die immediately unless you have like Immortal Sun or Mirari's Wake to give it additional toughness. Like you there's obviously exceptions, but again, it's based on how much mana you spend to cast that non-creature spell, right? Which, again, ties really well with Fall of the Thran, Fall of the Thran is six mana, and then blow up all lands. So you have then a six mana, six, six, or you have a six, six haste from Fall of the Thran, generated from Maniform Hellkite, and you have Maniform Hellkite, so that's 10 damage in the air that you're swinging in. Granted, you have to exile that token at the end of the end step, but it's still extra six damage. It's a ridiculous amount of damage. The other little bit of synergy that we have with Maniform Hellcat, which is very, very important to note, and I think is very pivotal when it comes to this deck, and that is Tefri's Protection. So Tefri's Protection is a three mana instant. Until your next turn, your life total can't change, and you gain protection from everything. All permanents you control phase out, and then you exile Tefri's Protection. This is just absolutely phenomenal because if you have Maniform Hellkite out, right? You have Maniform Hellkite out, it's all by itself. All by myself. Right? It's all by itself. And then they try to kill it with something or whatever. So you cast Tefri's Protection. What that does is that makes a 3-3 because Tefri's Protection is three mana. Makes a 3-3. And then everything phases out, which gives your Hellkite and your token protection, but it phases out. That means the token never actually exiles at the next end step. Pretty cool, right? Because it just says exile that token at the next end step. The token doesn't have the ability exile this token at the next end step. It just has that exile the token at the next end step clause. But if the token doesn't exist anymore because it's phased out, it won't always be on the battlefield. So once your turn comes again, you have an additional 3-3 three, three, plus everything else that was on top of that. So it's actually really, really nice. If for whatever reason you do end up getting nine mana, you can fall the Thran and then in response to the lands being blown up, you can spend another three mana for Tefri's protection. So you'll have a 6-6, six, six, a 3-3 three, three, and your 4-4, four, four, which is a lot of power on the board. 
Um, all your stuff has protection from everything. It all phases out. You don't get to attack that turn. But you have so much power on the board, and all lands are destroyed. So the advantage that you can get, the power swing that you can get from this little combo here, is absolutely ridiculous. And the last card that we have for our win condition is Faithbound Judge. It's another new card. It's a three mana, four, four Defender Flying Vigilance, which is a lot of really good stats, right? A whole lot of good stats. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Faithbound Judge has two or fewer judgment counters on it, put a judgment counter on it. As long as Faithbound Judge has three or more judgment counters on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Again, it has Vigilance and Flying, so... Being able to fly in with a 4-4 and Vigilance, it's like a free attack. You can still defend. Being able to have a 4-4 with Evasion is just amazing, right? Especially with Vigilance. Uh, it is three mana, and then you have to wait three turns before you can attack instead of just one because of haste. Um, so that is kind of a little oof. However, it's still a three mana 4-4. It's very, very good stats. The reason... That it is an actual win condition because obviously 4-4 four, four isn't really a win condition. I mean, you can have 4-4. Four, four, there's a bajillion 4-4s. Four, the part that we care about, the part that we really care about, is the Disturb 7. So Disturb cost is essentially if it's in the graveyard, you can pay 7 to cast it from your graveyard. When you do that, it turns into Sinster's Judgment, which is enchant a player. So it's a curse. You're going to enchant the opponent. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a judgment counter on Sinster's Judgment, so it's the same thing. Then, if there are three or more judgment counters on it, Enchanted Player loses the game. Pretty cool, right? So if you can get Sinster's Judgment out, wait three turns, they lose the game. It's pretty nice, right? It's only three turns, so it's really not that bad. If Sinster's Judgment would be put to the graveyard from anywhere, exile instead. Once again, Teferi's Protection does save this from any type of removal, so that's always important to note. The other part that's very important to note is that the text on here says, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a judgment counter on it. Then, then is the keyword. Then, if there are three more judgment counters on it, Enchanted Player loses the game. So, for instance, the reason this is so important is because if you have one counter on this judgment, so you play the judgment, your next turn comes around, you put one counter on it. Let's say you want to proliferate it four times for whatever reason, or you're able to pr proliferate it four times, right? Proliferate it four times trying to win the game. You don't win the game. Why do you not win the game? Because that second part of the clause already happened. Because, again, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a judgment counter on it. Then if there are three or more. So it doesn't actually do the check to see if there are three or more judgment counters on it, except for at the very beginning of your turn. So unless you can proliferate at instant speed on some way, even then, I don't even think you can do it on like in one turn. I don't. I just don't think it's possible. However, you can speed it up by proliferating it once with like a Karn's Bastion or something uh, to speed it up. Uh, you can take an extra turn to speed it up another turn. So there's a couple things that you can do to help with this. The fact that it only requires three turns in order for you to win, it's like approach of the second sun on fucking crack. And since it's a 4-4 defender, you want to block with this thing. It's flying vigilance. It's fantastic. We have a ton of board wipes, so getting it into the graveyard isn't even really that difficult. There's so many things that we can do here to protect it with Teferi's protection. You can use Follow the Thran to blow up all lands so they can't even remove it because they don't have mana to remove it. And it just adds the counters. Like, this card is surprisingly, surprisingly good. You don't think about it at face value. You'll see the games in the videos on how actually busted it is. With all of that being said, I don't know exactly what I would change with this deck. It seems very, very good the way it is right now. If you're going to add anything, I would say possibly change some lands. If you could add in Bajugabog, uh, which is a black source, but comes into the battlefield, exiles a graveyard. I think that would be amazing with Fall of the Thran. Uh, those lands would essentially just act as colorless lands, which we kind of went over earlier. But those would probably be the best addition. There is some non-synergistic components here with Thermatic Compass and Fall of the Thran. However, 
Compass has overperformed for me so much lately. It's really difficult for me to not run Thermatic Compass right now. Um, but that is just something for you to keep in mind. Outside of that, I really don't know if I would change anything. So if you want to take this and build it at home, it's going to run you 39 rares and 14 mythics. Eight of those mythics being brand new, four for the Hellkite and four for the Judge. We have a lot of the new lands in here. Uh, of course, the Boros, the new Boros fast land. It's beautiful. It's delicious. Everyone get it. It's amazing. Everyone get it. It's fa All the new land cycles, amazing. I love it. I love it. Anyway, so if you want the deck list, you can click on the link at the top right-hand corner of this video. It's a little card that pops out. should shoot you over to my Aether Hub page. If you want the text-based version, it'll be in the description below, as well as another link to the Aether Hub page. Stay salty and enjoy the games. All right. Land destruction, let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Do well. Joined to get the advertisement for M&Ms back to back. Nice. Keep. Whoa. It feels smoother. Check it out, chat. I got a squishy boy. Oh no, he swallowed the arm. Oh, and then he spit it back out. Nice. Trying to hold the blast zones back a little bit. I oh, know, froggy boy. Probably just do it now. Sure. Take it. See opponents playing boring rogues? Nah. They're just, uh. They're just trying really, really hard to suck their own dick. Is all. I don't want this Chandra right now. Shit. I tried. I tried. Rogues and Historic is Pog F, yeah. This is the reason I moved to Historic back when they were rampant in Standard. Yeah, rogues are just lame.
It's like when the... I remember when the last new set came out, we played... How many was it? I want to say it was like 30 games, and we saw two decks with different cards, or with new cards in it. I wonder if it's going to be the same this time, which sucks. I, I hate that. I mean, I get it, kind of, but at the same time, it's like I would expect that more in standard than historic because usually historic players like have more money, I would assume, because they have more of the historic cards. But then at the same time, they don't. Because it's possible that they just played in a lot of previous sets and then they came back. They came back for the new set, you know? And so they're just trying to, like, build their collection or whatever. Dude, just fucking counter it already! Hurry the, hurry the fuck up! Nobody cares! Nobody thinks you're intelligent, okay? You holding a counter spell means nothing, alright? Jesus. A lot of lands. They got all three of my Fall of the Thrands, unfortunately, chat. Do that before they play land, right? You play Historic, but I've been playing since beta. I don't drop the monies to have the standard cards. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, a lot of people do. Does it mean it doesn't suck? It's like, I just want to play with the newer cards, you know? I just, I want to play with the newer cards against the newer cards just to see, like, what the possibilities are all over the place. What is this? I don't even know what this card does. Then, if there are three or more. Hmm. I do win next turn. What's up, Dildo? How's it going, mine? It could still mill me, right? Nope. Got one. 
Allosaurus Fragiles. All right, everyone, cheers. Clangity, clangity. Clangity, 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 clangity. I mean, this is a horrible hand, right? Like, horrible? Okay, okay. I'm listening, opponent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. The green-white I didn't see. I didn't see that coming. Let's tap land. Fucking hate this goddamn land. I need to take those out. Alright, I just put myself a turn behind because, uh... Oops. All right. Someone punt that. Sure. That is a snow. Fuck. That's... I got jabated so hard. I was like, they can't play two snow lands. And now they can attack my fucking Chandra. But they didn't. Ooh, but they didn't. Okay, cool. they're going to make this split into like a bajillion and then they're going to do something with this. That's cool. I see. As long as you control seven or more enchantments, creatures you control have flying and vigilance. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, create a white spirit cleric creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of spirits you control. Ring is artifact. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I would like to get my intervention. It would be sweet. I thought about Fall of Thranding there just to kill their Faceless Havens. I don't have a way to exile their graveyard. I forgot about that. I forgot to exile graveyards. It's kind of a problem. Kind of a problem. The opponent may have misread it. That's definitely possible. It was a cool concept.
I gotta have counter spells or something, right? Destroy target artifact or enchantment? Like you're in a bunch of removal. Oh, that's not good. Opponent is a dinosaur. Most dinosaurs can't read most, but not this one. Yeah, I'm I'm probably dead. I don't know what to yet. But I'm probably dead. I feel like I'm dead. I I'm alive, but I'm dead. Uh sure. I did not do that in the right order. Oh yeah, I did. No, I didn't. I thought I thought I was short a mana. I thought I was short a mana. Cause I thought I was short a mana, that's why. No, I just I didn't count it. I just didn't count. That's all. Counting is hard, I agree. All right. Mission accomplished. Hey, Secret Muffin, did I add your sub to here? Is this still 10 out of 10 or were you 11? I don't remember if you were 10 or if you were 11. I think you were 10. Gift of Estates. I actually still haven't played much with Gift of Estates. I think Gift of Estates would be really good in some cases. Some cases. This is not a good hand. Do I ever keep good hands? I don't even know anymore. All right, it's tap land. Oh, beautiful. I put down the wrong land. All right, that's fine. This is fine. Opponent put down tap land. I repaid the favor by also putting down a tap land. It's, you know what? I wanted this anyway. Yeah. All right, this is extra fun. You don't like this new set in drafting? Fucking game was so damn long. Opponent had one damn card and left in our library. Damn. Alright, they missed land drops too. Great. Surrender. <laughs> no. Let's go to White Source. I'm be flipping these bitches. ASAP. B I T C H. You need a break now? Jesus, that bad? Opponent, stop it. I haven't decided if I want to get two lands from these before they flip. I might. Depends on what creatures they put down.
Hold on. Okay. Okay, I have a plan. Sure. Three, four, five, one, two, three. Okay. So I can do this. And I'm not exactly sure what to do yet. How goes the new Ponza? Uh, it's going all right. Why are you not tapping my shit? That seems like an odd move, opponent. Have I seen Arcane? I don't know who that is. No. No idea who that is. Okay. So, we do here. We attack that. Five brain, I tried. They're at one, chat. They're at one. Oh, I can do this for zero. I didn't know you could do that for zero. Fucking A, I didn't know you could do that for zero. Calm down a bit. Wait, it says between zero between zero and thirteen. Does that mean you can only do one and twelve? You can do zero and 13. Oh. You can do for zero? Okay. Because I remember when I, the first time I cast it, it defaulted to one. I do remember that. But I didn't check to see if I could go to zero. Because it says between zero and 13. Zero is not between zero and 13, right? Is that, is that not how between works? To make it to mythic with land destruction, even though this barely has land destruction, I need it barely does. Does it count? I mean, it's fall of the thran, so it destroys all lands, right? So that counts as land destruction, and it's really fucking good because it's six mana, blow up all lands, and make a six six. So it's like kind of fucking stupid. Put an exile graveyard. I th I think I need to. I just don't know what to put in yet. Because I could put in Lantern, I could put in Cage.
crypt. That's what I meant, not cage crypt. Goblins? Fuck you. Alright. Alright. I think I have to let that live for a turn. I think I need two more creatures out of this. I think I need two more creatures out of this. Yikes. Five. All right. Well, that would have been nice. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a card with Maze Mind Tome and Teferi's Protection. So I get them to, like, put their dicks on the table even more, right? Ooh. They're playing around Settle the Wreckage, chat. That's interesting. That is interesting. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dick's on the table. Got here at a good time. Damn right. Oh no. All right. All right. Okay, we're fine. Let the table dickerage commence. It's about to happen. It is commencing. I'm at 16. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, just draw. Yeah, draw. Use that for mana. Draw from your clue. You got it. You got it, opponent. You got it. Be the smart. There you go. They did the smart. They can draw one. They did, in fact, draw one. Oh no.
Uh, do you want to shuffle your library? No? You don't? Hell yes! That'll be the next project. That's the next project. So after, after the website is up and I have like the first set of merch going on the website, after I can afford, after all those people are paid, then I can like try to possibly recoup a little bit of money. I'll use my next chunk of money to hire musicians for debated remixes because that sounds like the dumbest shit ever <laughs> jabaked <laughs> uh, all right that was fantastic i agree I have a 4-4. Four, four. Mormon Tabernacle Choir version. Jabated shirt when? Maybe I should do jabated shirt. Unfortunately, Settle the Wreckage is, like, super garbage right here. Oh! My face. It hurts. Uh... Do I kill that? I think I do. Resolve. Resolve. Decline. Just in case. Jesus. Opponent's on that shit, dude. Opponent is on that shit. Haha, <laughs> take four Demouche. If I could get, like, a good artist to do a debated type of shirt I think it would be cool yeah maybe I would have to find a way to do like I would have to get a creative way Oh no, Clara class. Oh no. Uh So I think I just do this and then kill it with fateful absence, right? I think that's the best use of our mana because it guarantees our seventh land for judge and then we untap with compass yeah i think that's good i think that's good jabearded hell yeah no but like all the merch and stuff i want to do it needs to be really like artistic i'm going for way more on like the artsy side of things than anything else um 
just because. I don't know. I don't really have a super big reason. Yes, you can draw a card. Compass is actually not that great in here because follow the Thran. I forgot. I just love Compass so much. Compass is so fucking good. Compass is so good. Hmm. Nope. <laughs> I love it. It's like McDonald's. I will pay one. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, I will pay one. Uh, we got to start with six, and then we'll do nine on this one, right? Right? And then say nice. Am I allowed to do that? Is that, is that allowed? I don't know that's going to help you, opponent. Can you kill me? Alright, this judge card is fucking obscene. Okay. So at the end of the day, this deck ended up going 7-1. and one. It's a very, very good deck. I, I don't even know what the weaknesses are, to be honest. Um, the combination of Maniform Hellkite and the Faithbound Judge, those two completely different types of win conditions makes this deck so consistent and with those two completely different and both consistent win cons in the same deck with a bunch of supporting cards with it makes it extremely difficult to deal with coming from an opposing deck so as far as weaknesses go i don't feel like we have any it's definitely possible that if we run into a deck that has heavy discard as well as graveyard exile then we are going to have a problem so that's what I would say is our only actual weaknesses, but you don't typically see a lot of heavy discard with Graveyard Exile. So unless they're running Go Blank or some Bajuga Bogs or Ashiok with it, you shouldn't have really any problem with any deck. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it to this point, it means you either really enjoyed the video or you fell asleep and I'm waking you up now. <laughs> either way, thank you for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, come out with videos seven days a week.